Hello, welcome to another vlog. So first things first, let's get it out of the way. The elephant in the room. Yes, I cut my hair. <laughs> Why did I cut my hair? Well, I've had the other hairstyle for about 15 years, or at least it feels like it. So I decided I wanted to change. Change is good. Also, I'm getting over a cold. It was more like laryngitis. I completely lost my voice. It is mostly back, but I do sound just a tiny bit congested. That is why. So, uh, but I still wanted to tell you this story. The reason is that this is not at all a clickbait story. It was a very scary incident that happened. Uh, yes, my daughter was the victim of an attempted kidnapping. So I wanted to tell you the story of how that happened. So a little bit of backstory and most of my American um, subscribers, people who follow me, what may not understand this is part of European culture, in particular German culture. And that is that children are encouraged to be very independent. So what I am saying is not, what I'm telling you, like the circumstances of it is not at all unusual in Germany. So what happened was, um, so the backstory is, um, a couple of years ago, my daughter started having trouble in school. She was, um, she was acting out and by acting out, I, it's not typically acting out. Most kids who act out start like hitting other kids and getting in fights. Yeah, not my daughter. She, um, was getting very anxious and she would hide. She would hide under the desk in class. She would hide in the bushes during recess. And I was quite concerned because I knew that that's not normal behavior. That's not usually how kids behave, even if they are nervous. So um, I knew that my daughter is kind of an extreme case and I was very concerned. I went uh, to child services. Yes, I went to child services. They did not come to me. And I mentioned that I was concerned about my daughter's behavior in class. And um, I asked for a classroom helper. Uh, that has to be approved through child services or you're never gonna get one. There's waiting lists for stuff like this. So what I wanted was someone to sit with her in class and make sure that she stays on task and doesn't get freaked out and doesn't try and hide. So that was the original idea. Unfortunately, it was rejected this uh, um, request was rejected by a committee. It's not one particular person didn't like us or whatever. It's uh, that they decided that her academic needs weren't bad enough that she would need one. But as an alternative, our caseworker and child services suggested that we try an alternative care group for her. It's an after school care kind of a facility. And what they do is um, there are nine children that are all high risk or acting out kind of kids. And they are being watched by four adults. So there's a very high ratio of adults to children. And uh, they help with homework, make sure that homework gets done. They're a little bit more responsible than most care groups are. And the care that she had before was through the school. So it was like an in built, built in after school program. And there were, I think one adult per 30 children, something like that. It's not really enough to make sure that nobody disappears, but in a group like this other special care group that it, uh, that she would be a lot better taken care of. So when she first started, she was seven and they picked her up. But as she got older, they encouraged her to be more independent. This is very typical in Germany because it's a very safe place to live. There's not a lot of crime. So um, they encouraged her to walk on her own. Uh, it's a little bit of a long walk, though. It's, uh, it's about three quarters of a mile, and it's mostly uphill. So there were days where she wasn't feeling well and wasn't feeling very motivated, and so it took her a really long time to get there. And so our alternative for that, our solution to this problem, is that I got her a bus ticket that would uh, allow her to take the city bus. I think it's four stops, it might be five, from the school up to her care group. So it's, it's a direct 
you know, she doesn't have to change buses. It's di she goes directly there. It's pretty safe. Like a lot of kids take city buses in Germany. This is very typical. Okay. Uh, children over eight, I would say. Um, Sabrina is now nine. So that wasn't my biggest concern. I was like, oh no, she can take the city bus. I think it'll be fine. So, um, so that's the situation we're in. Okay. So every day after school gets out, my daughter goes to the city bus stop, waits for the bus, and then takes it to her care group where she gets off and walks to her care group, which is right next to the bus stop, basically. And then I pick her up in the afternoon. So that is the situation. That's, you know, how we have it up, built up. So on the day in question, my daughter was waiting at the bus stop. Um, and this bus stop, it's kind of like, like a shortcut bus stop, so to speak. She has to like go through like a different, like the school grounds and then over the, through a park in order to get to it. So, um, it's like taking a shortcut to get there, but it's not the most direct one. It's the closest one. So, um, she goes to that one and, um, it's a little bit out of the way is what I'm saying. It's not on the main road, but it's not that far away from it either. It's like, it, it's like around the corner, like just off of the main road. Um, and so she's standing there. Actually, she said she got tired and she sat down on the ground because there's no bench at that bus stop. So she is sitting on the ground. It was a warm day. It was probably uh, like 20 degrees out, which is what, what, 65, 70, 70 ish. So it was warm out. It was not cool. Um, and so she was sitting on the ground playing on her phone because I gave her a phone exactly for this reason so that she can reach me while she's out and about. So she was on her phone and this woman like pulled her car up in the middle of the street next to the bus stop. She stopped her car and she didn't even park it. She just stopped it and got out of the car, was standing in the middle of the street. This is a side street. Yeah, it's not that busy, but I'm just saying like, it's weird. Um, she gets out of the car and she starts talking to my daughter and she was saying things like, oh, are you all alone? Where's your mother? Um, you know, such a little girl all by yourself. Um, where are you going? Uh, why aren't you wearing a jacket? Everybody should wear a jacket. Now my daughter got a little bit sassy here because she didn't understand what this woman wanted from her. So she was, she even told her, she said, actually, I'm not that little. I look younger than I am. And she totally does. Okay. So, um, she looks to be, you know, seven turning eight and she's already nine and a half. So, you know, um, so she said, Hey, I'm, I'm not that little. I'm nine. You might think that I'm younger than that, but I'm not. And, um, and you, she said, you should talk about what people should do when she said people should wear jackets. And I said, you're standing in the middle of the street. <laughs> and, uh, I thought that was funny. But, um, at this point she was standing cause the lady was talking about her sitting and, um, it, but I feel like a lot of kids sit there. Like I've seen a lot of kids sitting on the ground waiting for the bus. It's not that big a deal. Anyways. Um, so at this point she had stood back up and the woman came over to her and like grabbed her upper arm, like here and started pulling her towards her car. And, um, Sabrina got really spooked. She pushed the lady away and got her arm out of there and started running. She took off running. Um, and then when she glanced back, she saw that the bus was coming. So she tr comes back towards the bus and she gets on. And, um, and then the lady gets back into her car. She pulls a U-turn and follows the bus. And she didn't try to pass the bus. She just followed directly behind the bus and looked out at every stop to see if my daughter was getting off. And then when she finally did get off, you know, the few stops up that she was getting off at, then she flipped another U-turn and followed her at walking 
pace. Um, just flabbergasted. Luckily, we were very lucky. Another person observed this. So this witness saw what was going down at the bus stop originally thought maybe that's her grandmother because it was an older woman. This woman was guessed to be between 50 and 60 years old. So this 50 year old woman was, was trying to grab my daughter, but this uh, witness saw what was going on. She um, wasn't hundred percent sure if she should get involved or not. But then when she saw my daughter push her away and run, and she knew that that's, that that's not okay. Like there's something's going on there that shouldn't be happening. And so she followed the other lady in her car to see what the other lady was going to do. She didn't want to scare my daughter, so she did not approach her. But she wanted to make sure that she wasn't in danger. So... Uh, when she noticed the other woman following my daughter, you know, in her car after she got out of the bus, then the woman, uh, the witness, she got out of her car and went up to the other woman's car and said, you need to go now. You need to leave. Clearly the child doesn't want you here. She doesn't want to talk to you. Just leave. So she left. But the witness also got a photograph of the woman's car, including the license plate. So they, she was able to tell the police about that. Also, the witness um, called the police and went into my daughter's care group to let them know what happened. And they called me and I was there about 10 minutes later. When I got there, the police had already arrived and they were talking to the witness. They decided to let my daughter alone for a few minutes and let her eat lunch because she eats lunch there and, um, and calm down a bit. And then when they were ready to question her, they asked me to be there too. So, um, Sabrina was unable to talk to the police very clearly. Um, so I told her to just look at me and tell me what happened so that the police could then hear what happened and then could take a statement. She was so scared. She was so scared. But the thing is that I found really sad wasn't what she said. It was, it was how she felt. She... Her initial feeling was guilty. She felt really guilty, like she had done something wrong because she had pushed the woman away. She said, what if I hurt her? I said, honey, if somebody is putting you in danger, if somebody is trying to kidnap you, absolutely hit, kick, push, bite, scratch. I do not care. You just get them away from you. So I told her how proud I am of her. Sorry, I didn't actually expect to get emotional. I've been telling this story for a while, but just usually I'm pretty calm about it. But what bothers me the most is, is how, how anybody can try and kidnap a child. Like, like Sabrina even asked me, what would she have done? What would she have done if I had gone with her? And I told her, I don't know. There are, of course, a couple of possibilities I don't want to think about. My best guess is one of two things. And I've had time to think about this. So these are my best guesses. Number one is that she is just crazy and didn't know better, I guess, like in that moment, like whether that was like, influenced by substance abuse or if she's like has Alzheimer's or like is seriously demented, like I don't know. That is the one I prefer <laughs> because the other possibility I could think of is that we live in kind of a nice neighborhood and if 
she was making the assumption that because we live in this nice neighborhood that my daughter has money and was kidnapping her for ransom. Like, <laughs> jokes on her, I'm a single mother. <laughs> I don't really have money. But um, we were very lucky with this apartment. It's, it's very affordable. So we have a very affordable apartment in a nice neighborhood, which we are very, very lucky to have. But that means that my children don't really have money. <laughs> like, not in the sense of, like, you know, having money. So, jokes on them. But uh, those are my best guesses for her motivation and what she would have done afterwards. If she was dement, though, I don't know what she would have done afterwards. Uh, but if she just wanted money, then she would have sent some sort of ransom note and, um, uh, it, like, police would have been involved immediately. Um, when talking to the police, they said that based on the statements, technically and according to the law, she did not break the law because you are allowed to talk to a child. You are allowed to touch a child as long as you don't hurt them, you know? Um, and I get that. I get that that is allowed. However, um, I feel like they, that certain intentions could be implied and it's not even the initial contact where she got out of her car she might have just been like checking on my daughter because she was sitting on the ground like making sure that she was okay and hadn't hurt herself like you know i'm trying to make excuses come up with some sort of explanation but what i can't forgive is her following the bus and then following my daughter when she got out of the bus it made me very very grateful that she wasn't going home so this woman doesn't know where she lives. And she is a very, very safe in her care group because of the very well-trained personnel that they have. They would never let a stranger take her. Like if she had gone into the building and been like, oh, I'm here to pick up the little girl, you know, they would have been like, who are you? You know, they, they know me, they know my husband and like, they, like, like, they know who is authorized to pick her up. So, um, so I feel like she was pretty safe in that sense. And I'm very glad she was. Um, it's crazy. It's just crazy that it even happened. But what have I, what have we learned from this? Um, we've learned that as safe as you can feel in a nice neighborhood, with your children doing regular things, it's never 100% safe, is it? You can't make things 100% safe. It's impossible. But it is frightening when things really happen and you have to report them. It's just a crazy world we live in. Sure is. So, um, I don't really have a point in telling anyone this. Basically, what I want is for people to make sure that, that your kids are safe. Just keep your kids safe, people. Also, there was one little stereotype that I would like to break, and that is that most um, crimes are committed by men. Um, certain kinds of crimes, that's probably true. But when it comes to kidnapping, it's actually not at all uncommon for a woman to do it because children trust women more quickly. Um, like if you're going to grab a child and run, then that's more of a man's way of doing it, like typically, stereotypically. But women tend to um, like try to convince kids to come with them and they're much better at it than men are. Uh, the police are making regular rounds in our area now. I see them in that same neighborhood, um, as particularly in the early afternoon when the kids are getting out of school and, and are at their most vulnerable. So, so that is our 
not at all clickbaity, 100% true story of how my daughter was almost kidnapped. And I'm very, very glad that she reacted the way she did and that she didn't trust this woman who she didn't know. The only thing that we suggested that she could have done better was to yell for help. She didn't do that. I think that at that point she didn't know what to do um, and she just kind of froze a little bit in the indecisiveness of, you know, what do I do? But people from outside were looking in, thought that she was having some sort of argument with a family member, even though the woman didn't look like her at all. Um, but you need to teach your children to cry for help. If she had said, help, help, this is not my grandmother, I don't know this woman, or something along those lines, then the people around her would have been at her side immediately. Like, like the, the witness stayed back. Like she didn't want to get involved if she thought it was a family thing, but it wasn't sure. She, you know, she wasn't sure. So she just kind of stayed back and just watched for a while. As soon as she saw my daughter push her away, then she came in and stepped in and said, stop, this is not acceptable. And decided to act as a witness and uh, followed the woman who was following the bus. So it's a crazy day. I am very, very grateful for that witness who was able to help my daughter in a time of need. I didn't know we would need her, but I'm really, really, really grateful that she was there. Um, yeah, protect your children and be suspicious of women. It's uh, not all women are trustworthy, so. That's what we've learned. <laughs> I'm taking it relatively well. Uh, I am mostly concerned about my daughter. The thing is we tr do our best to work through her emotions about it and she's allowed to come in and talk to me anytime she's feeling uncertain. And she has a couple times where she's felt very nervous, felt guilty or felt angry and, and she just needed to talk about it any time of the day or night. I told her she can come in, and she has. Um, she's gone in and woken me up before because she couldn't sleep because she was so scared. And uh, so that's like dealing with the aftermath is what we're doing, and we're trying to work through her emotions as best we can. Anyway, um, I hope that makes sense to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. But, um, yeah, stay safe and, uh, and don't trust all women. They're not all trustworthy. And I hope to see you in the next vlog.